Suppose there was a group who set out for a fishing trip. The group was led by a guide who they trusted would lead them to like fish. This looks like a spot, plenty of fish here. He led them to water, but the group became full of excuses for why they couldn't fish. Some people came on the trip dressed the part and full of great fishing stories, but never seemed to do anything. Some claim they did not have the heart for fishing. I can't fish. Hooking a worm? It's just too cruel. But you know it's a rubber worm, right? Some said the work should be left to those who were more skilled in the art of fishing. Carl, he's really good at casting. Shouldn't he be doing all the fishing? No, no, you can do it. It's really simple. Look, Boy, some claim really that out. fishing was not their gift. Told us hey, uh, uh, fishing's really not my thing. In fact, it scored a zero on my spiritual gifts test, so... No, we could still really use your Before help. the guide could yeah. finish, no. Carl interrupted him. I think I got one! Hey, great! You mind helping out with some of the others? No, it's okay. Carl was more impressed with catching fish on his own than he was in helping people out, like Greg here. I got a small problem here. My line's a little tangled up. Oh, my goodness. How in the world did that... Some of the people fishing said they just didn't have time to fish. Matt, where are you going? Oh, yeah. I, I, I have an appointment um, thing that's going around. It's, good. it's okay. I got, a, I got a stick. It's doing great. It's great. Whoa. And some people, well, they just had problems. Hey, uh, my hook's caught on something. What's it caught on? If everyone did their part, imagine the fish that could be caught. Well, good morning, church. And welcome to those who both in our Kemptville campus as well as those who are worshiping with us online. We are so glad to have you here today. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Pastor Jim, and I will uh, be here for, you're gonna have to put up with me for another two months through the end of June. But it's good to be here, good to see you, and I have some great news. Are you ready? Next Sunday, we can start singing. Woohoo! Now, we can only sing a couple of hymns. And we still have to have our masks on. But we can actually sing. All right? As long as you're vaccinated. Now, if you're not vaccinated, I can't tell whether you're singing or not with a mask. Honor system, okay? Uh, so we're, we're excited about that. Now, those of you who are at home uh, worshiping with us online, you can sing your hearts out today. Uh, I don't know whether the words will be up on the screen or not, but 
Maybe you know the songs, but you can sing your hearts out. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to have an outdoor Pentecost service. And outside, we can sing our hearts out no matter whether we've been vaccinated or not. But, so I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Today, we are going to be celebrating communion uh, at the latter part of the service. And if you have, uh, are worshiping with us here in person, we hope that you have gotten uh, the communion elements as you entered. If you haven't, please make sure you raise your hand and one of the ushers will get them to you. If you're worshiping with us at home, we hope that you'll get your communion elements and have them prepped uh, with you so that we can celebrate even with you. So good to have everyone here today. I'm going to turn it over to Jeanette. This is Jeanette Clavet. I'm the Minister of Congregational Care here at Community. Um, in lieu of saying uh, good morning, can I get a woo woo? Oh, come on. <laughs> woo woo! <laughs> yes. Um, some announcements I'd like to share. Well, first, let me say here at Community, we have a mission, and that mission is to love God, to love people, and to grow. And the way in which we do that is through small groups. And our small groups have been meeting. So if you would like to be a part of a small group, please contact Andrea Jenkins um, uh, via the website. And she will help you get connected to the right folks. Also, if you are worshiping with us as our guest, or either in person or online, we invite you to go to our church website, www.cumcbb.org, and fill out the connection card found on the home page. And we would love to connect with you. Also, Care Ministries is hosting an advanced care seminar on Tuesday, May 18th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The seminar will be led by Shelley Murphy, who is a member of our congregation. And for more information, check the church website under events. Care Ministries will also be offering a training event on May 23rd at 2 p.m. in the social hall. We'll be meeting live. And uh, now that some of the protocols have changed, we can get our care ministry up and going again. So we hope to see you there. Again, um, please check the website for more information. Also, our Bible camp information session has been changed from May 3rd to June 1st. So if you would like to volunteer for Bible camp, that is the time um, in which it has been changed to, and you can register with Andrea at Blessings1967 at yahoo.com. Let us join together in worship. Come, if you'd like to stand, come and sit with me. We will study the word. Come and kneel with me. We shall break the bread. Come and walk with me. We shall part the waters.
be seated if you so desire. It is nice to be led by children. Let us join together in the prayer of the people. O oh God, in the beginning, you created heaven and earth. And one day, as you walked upon the land, you came upon a very fertile hill and imagined there a vineyard, purple with grapes. With your own hands, you dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. Long you tended it and looked for it to yield its fruit, but it yielded only wild grapes. Join me. No more could you have done that. Your pleasant planting turned bitter and rebelled against you. You looked for justice, but behold, we bore bloodshed. You looked for righteousness, but behold, we produced a cry. You, have, you could have become angry, Lord. You could have removed the hedge that protected the yard that we might be devoured by the beasts. You could have broken down its wall, that we might be trampled. You could have laid it waste and let our barriers and thrones grow up. You could have commanded the clouds to withhold their rains so that nothing would grow. Even as you are our creator and sustainer, O oh God, you are our redeemer, and you planted again in our midst. You set out at the center of the vineyard, the true vine. The vine has grown. It cannot be destroyed. It cannot bear bad fruit. Its good fruit hangs heavy on the branches, bearing witness to your care. Christ is the vine, Lord. Make us the branches. Whatever you ask us to be, we shall be. Whatever you ask us to do shall be done. By this we are humbled, Lord, for you are Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, love, that began the beginning and knows no end. Yours is the love that birthed the world and makes it grow. Yours is the love, Lord, that changes the world inside and out. The ones unclean in the world's eyes, your love makes clean. The mighty ones in the world's eyes, your love makes humble. The ones guilty in the world's eye, your love ushers into paradise. Lord, for this we praise you, that you first and last love us. Now what remains is for you to teach us how better to love one another. Teach us, Lord, the truth of life before the hour is late. Lead us, Lord, in the way we should go before the gate is closed. Bring us now into your vineyard, Lord. Prune us and tend to us that we may bear good fruit. We offer you all that we are. Press us into the wine of the new covenant that the cup of the new kingdom may be filled to overflowing. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Good morning again, church, and so glad to see everyone. I have just one passage of scripture that I would like to share this morning. It's a very familiar passage. How many of you all have seen, either those here or maybe those who are watching online, have seen the uh, crowdfunded TV series, The Chosen? Anyone? One? Oh. Two, okay. I don't know about you at home. I can't see your hands. But if you get a chance, oh, up here, a couple, all right. If you get a chance, download the app to your iPad, your, your phone, or whatever. It works for Android as well as for uh, Apple products. And you can watch for free a series called The Chosen. The chosen are the disciples. And season one is complete, eight, eight episodes. Um, I binge watched them twice when COVID started because there was nothing else to watch on TV. And I got so into it, I enjoyed it so much, I watched it twice. They've already come out with season two, the first three episodes. And so you can kind of, but you need to watch uh, season one first. You get a chance and go back and watch that. Then watch uh, the next, uh, the three episodes from uh, season two. And in the next couple weeks, episode four will be released. But in there, some of the stories, or one of the stories, is the calling of some of the disciples. Those who would be the chosen. And that included... Andrew, and Peter, James, and John. Go back and watch, and particularly watch the episode where Peter goes out, fishes all night, doesn't get anything, and then Jesus says, put the net out again. And when he brings it in, he, he can, his boat cannot contain all the fish. It's a great scene. So I encourage you to go out and watch that.
But with that in mind, our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, beginning in the first chapter, just a few verses. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, that's Peter, and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their net and followed him. And when they had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Pardon me. I grew up on Long Island, New York. My parents, my father, my mother, were all in the boat business. I grew up on the water. I had my first boat when I was 12 years old. It was a little small wooden boat with an 18 horsepower Evinrude on the back. It was flat bottom, but man, it would move. Then I graduated and I got a little bit bigger boat with a 55 horsepower Evinrude on it. And I would go skimming across the bay. It was a ski boat. I even raced all the police boats out there. Not to get away from them, we knew them. And so uh, we, we used to uh, play around there. I used to love going fishing in the Great South Bay on Long Island. Mostly, we would fish for flounder. And then we would also fish for those ugly, stupid fish called blowfish. Anyone ever caught them before? Oh my gosh. They are the stupidest fish you could stand knee deep in water with a string with a bobby pin on it and they would come and they would bite it and I'd haul them up and the rest of them would go away. I'd take them off the hook, put them in the bucket, put it back down, they'd all come back. They were the stupid, but they were great tasting fish. I remember many times out on my parents' boat fishing my brother on one side, I on the other. And my brother would be catching fish, and I wasn't. So I would push him out of the way, because, I mean, after all, those fish were 10 feet further, you know. And I would fish on his side, hoping that I would catch something. Well, unfortunately, my fishing skills have diminished over the years, but not the thrill of fishing, of when you hook something. Maybe you can remember when you were a child, the first time you caught a fish, or maybe the first time your child caught a fish or grandchild caught a fish. When I take my grandkids out, they just love it. But it's called fishing, not catching. Life is too short not to fish. So I want you to go with me on a little fishing trip today. And instead of characteristics, I want to talk about fisheristics to define how we as a church have been involved in the ministry of Christ. Jesus is walking along the side of the Sea of Galilee. He sees Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen and he says come follow me and I'll send you out to fish people. Jesus was gathering his leadership team together. We have a leadership team here at community. Jesus was gathering his leadership team. He sees some of the others and Calls them. Do you know that seven out of the 12 disciples that Jesus chose 
were fishermen. Have you ever wondered why? I mean, why didn't he choose doctors and lawyers? I'm sure they had lawyers back then. Why didn't he choose CEOs of major companies? Certainly, he could have done better with at least one of his choices. He chose Judas. I mean, he could have hired someone like Gary Lupton, who worked for Town Bank. Gary would have been a better choice. He could have hired military officers. Beth, maybe he would have taken you or your, your husband. Uh, maybe a tech person. Uh, he could have hired uh, Kenny or, or Brian or some of the others who, who were able to get some publicity for him. Maybe someone with a public relations background. But instead, Jesus chose fishermen. And it's very probable that the answer for, e is for essential discipleship then as well as today is in that text. As members and leaders of the church of Jesus Christ, we must remember that fishing is our primary motivation for ministry. Jesus told a bunch of fishermen, follow me, and no longer will you fish for dirty, stinky, slimy, yucky fish, but I will make you fishers of people. Now, before we go further, I want you to notice that Jesus never called his disciples to be catchers of people. He only called them to be fishers of people. It's our job to do the fishing. It's Jesus' job to do the catching. We are just called to fish. So let's look at some fisheristics. That's characteristics for fishermen, okay? Fisheristics. First of all, fishermen or fisher people, whatever, must have a real purpose. Now, several years ago, I went to buy a new fishing reel. Do you know how many different kinds of reels there are? I mean, there are reels for casting and for trolling. There are reels for fishing in the ocean and in the bay and bass fishing. My son is a great bass fisherman. He, he loves to fish back bay for bass. He says, this tug is my drug. He went out and bought a, a boat that'll go 70 miles an hour. I did not know fish were that fast. He loves it. Sometimes, if, he, if he's not working, he's out fishing. Sometimes he'll take his wife, and very reluctantly, he'll sometimes take me. But like reels... We all have different bodies of water that God has given us to fish. Some of you like the calm waters of the intercoastal. Others like the ocean. Sending lures deep to get that big one. The last year or so, many of you have been fishing in some very unchartered unfamiliar waters. The tragedy of May 31st, almost two years ago, COVID, loss of family and friends, uh, isolation from people, loss of jobs, all of that has given an opportunity for all of us to be supportive of family and friends. You were fishing in uncharted waters. And you can't and don't all fish in the same places. There are some fishing spots that Jesus is calling you to fish in that God is not calling you or you or you or you to fish in. There are some inlets, some coves that may have been missed. Find those hideaway spots and start fishing. 
Just leave the catching to Jesus. The second fisheristic is that fishermen need to have a real passion. There is nothing like getting that first big bite. Do you remember the first time you held a rod and a reel in your hands and got that fish? Let a novice feel that, and they are hooked, literally, for life. There's an excitement and a passion that keeps you going. Jesus was a passionate fisherman. He wanted to connect lost people to God with a message of hope and forgiveness. Jesus wanted to get others involved in the fishing business. He chose seven fishermen who knew the waters, who knew the bait, knew the excitement of reeling in that first fish. And that excitement spilled over to his disciples. They could not be contained. Even after spending all night long fishing, They were tired. Jesus said, throw the net in one more time. And they did, and they brought in boatloads. Now, at the end of the gospel, just as Jesus is getting ready to leave his disciples, all of them very accomplished fishermen now at this time, he says, go into all the world. Go into all the fishing holes in the world. Preach my gospel. Welcome new fish into the family of God through baptism. Now, unlike when fishermen catch a fish and throw it back in the water, and that's what my son does, catch and release, God does not throw us back where we came from. God does not catch us and gut us and throw us into a cooler, but he catches us to set us free. Jesus' idea was catch and release. He catches us by creating faith in our hearts. Faith in Jesus' death on the cross. Faith that releases us from our sins. Faith that releases us from the guilt and the despair of wondering how we can ever make it through or do enough to make God love us. We find true freedom because Jesus caught and released us. Now last Sunday... Not for this service, but for the other service. I wore a very loud sport jacket. Anyone see the picture on on Facebook? Okay. That was my uh, Marshall University alma mater type jacket. Very loud. And I did that because I was trying to give Max a little run for his money. It became, uh, you know, kind of a challenge. Do you know how many people that post was reached? Anyone? Over 1,500 people in less than a week. All because of a silly Facebook post about a crazy pastor wearing a very loud sport jacket. Now, Alva Chop, is she here? I don't even see. There you are. Alva Chop made a comment about my jacket, and a friend of hers commented on that and said, Is that your church? She said, Yes. She said, I'd like to come to that church, and my daughter would like to come. I just got a note from Alva last night saying that the friend can't make it today. But friend, if you're watching, we're looking for you next week. That's fishing. Fisheristic number three is fishermen are real optimists. Great fishermen must have an optimistic attitude. If you don't catch them today, don't give up. We'll get them tomorrow or the next day or the next spot. I've been fishing down the intercoastal, never got a thing, not even a bite. I've been fishing by the second island out in the bay. You know, you go out there, I go out there in my boat and I see all these, these boats and they're all by the island. I go, okay, that must be a good spot. And I go out there and I anchor there and I throw in the lure hoping that it doesn't get caught on the rocks, uh, which it does always. I lose a couple lure 
expensive lures, may or may not get anything. But you don't pack up and go home. You go to another spot. You keep fishing. You drift. Try another lure. Add some weight so it sinks to the bottom. Or as my grandson says, put a popper on it. He calls them popper. Put a popper on it. When you miss one area, you don't pack up and go home. Maybe the next time, the next cast, the next spot, that's where I'm going to catch the big one. I want you to remember it's called fishing, not catching. All we need to do is cast to troll, get the lines out, fish, let Jesus do the catching. Too many times we get so wrapped up in what the boat looks like. Have you ever noticed that when some people join the church over the years, they disappear? They're not here this morning. Now, that's not maybe because of COVID. I don't know. But there are far more members of community, United Methodist Church, than are here on any given Sunday or even watching on any given Sunday. Now, there are many reasons. COVID is one reason, I'm sure. Some people decided that fishing is not their game, like that little video that we saw at the very beginning of the service. Or they've moved on. They're tired of doing all the fishing themselves, and they've decided to let others to do some fishing for a change. Sometimes people get excited about fishing, and they go out and, and buy the boat and buy the, the clothes and the lures and all of that. You know, on Facebook Marketplace... I have seen so many boats that people bought last year when COVID hit that they needed to do something, so they bought all these boats and they never used it. One guy had a fishing kayak, completely outfitted. I don't understand why you get a fishing kayak, put a GPS on it, a fish finder, rod holders, and all of that. It's now about $10,000 for these daggone kayaks. And he says, I only used it three times, so I figured I'd sell it. People think, and this is fisheristic number four, fishermen need real persistence. Some people think that you have to be patient to be a good fisherman. That's not true. It's not being patient that is not the end all. What a fisherman needs is persistence. Persistence is about action, intentionality. When you're persistent, you never give up trying to fish. And those people will have fish stories to tell. We will not always have hundreds of visitors waiting in line to sign up for Bible study or some of the discipleship classes that we offer here. We may not always catch the one we had on the hook and almost got into the boat, you know, the one that got away, right? We might have a bad week or even a bad year, but thankfully it's not up to us. Jesus promises that our responsibility is to go fishing. He'll do the catching. Imagine a t-shirt. I want to get one sometime. It says, Jesus is fishing charters. You catch them, he'll clean them. Okay? Simply throw the bait out there. Share the message. Jesus will reel them in. The fifth fisheristic is fishermen need to have a real partnership. Now, many years ago, a friend of mine from Chesapeake and I went out of Oregon Inlet on a charter fishing boat with uh, four other fishermen. I had never been, none of us had ever been out Oregon Inlet. None of us had ever been fishing for tuna. We didn't know where to go. We didn't know what kind of bait to use, what kind of poles, or anything. You know who did? the captain and the mate. They knew where to go, and man, did we catch fish. I caught a 45-pound yellowfin tuna and about a dozen mahi. 
You see, we chartered the boat. We partnered with a captain who knew the waters, who knew the tides, who knew the signs of the fish. But do you know what good fishermen do? They fish. They keep casting. They keep working the lines. There are a lot of people who come and take nibbles on the bait, even here at community. You see them every now and then, and they splash at the top of the waters, try a few bites of the bait, and then may be gone. You cannot beat yourself up over them. You can try different bait. What happens to the fish is between them and God. Do you know the major reason people, the majority of people who do not go to church do not go to church? Do you know the major reason? Because nobody ever invited them. Life is too short not to fish. Sometimes we try to cast all by ourselves and come up empty-handed. It's a natural urge that we need to avoid. So often, the Lord shows us people to talk to, people to help. He puts them on our hearts, and if we are listening, we can respond to that prompting. We are partners together with the Lord in this business of fishing. We bait the hook. We throw it over the side. Jesus does the catching. It takes a team effort. So let me ask a question of everyone here. Are you committed to fishing? Is the church, is community, United Methodist Church, committed to the job of fishing? And are you willing to do whatever it takes to reach those lost fish out there, even if it means making some changes. You and I have got to love to fish. All kinds of fish. For, never forget the miracle of God's grace at work in your life. Never forget the real difference that Christ has made in your life. Jesus does the catching. All we have to do is be willing to brave the elements, to use our God-given creativity as we cast the bait, as we throw out the lines, as we cast for the lost fish in the waters around us. Life is too short not to fish. Have a great day fishing. Let us stand as we proclaim the Apostles' Creed, the affirmation of faith together as we prepare to fish. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we, you may be seated, as we contemplate our gifts and our tithes, let us join together in prayer. God of the far flung universe and God who was closer than our own heartbeat, we long to dwell in your closeness, abiding in you 
and you abiding in us. However, the call to abide in other places is strong. To abide in the world of popularity and acceptance or in the world of increasing wealth and power centered around our own wants and desires. As we offer our gifts and ourselves to you, help us to turn away from other calls and abide in the place where our heart's deepest desires should be, in your son, Jesus, and he in us. And it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. And for those of you who are worshiping online with us, as well as those of you who are 
sitting here in the Kempsville campus. We uh, hope that you have your communion elements with you. Let me just give you a couple instructions. Uh, when uh, there is a tear off portion of that uh, cup, the wafer is underneath that and then take the top off fully and there's the juice when we get to, to receiving the elements. When you are finished, if as you exit the church today, if you would lay the, uh, uh, the empty cup piece on the table over here by the offering plates, okay? We're using a different liturgy this morning. So hopefully you can see the screen and, and join in the bold-faced response. God is here with us and with you. Let us give our hearts, intentions, and thoughts over to God. Let us give them all joyfully. Let us also give thanks to God who gets everything. Of course, God gets everything. God made everything. Let us show our thanks and honor God. Giving God our thanks and honor is the best thing we could ever do. God, you created everything, every living thing that was put on earth by you. All people of every nation belong to you. So together with all creation, we give you praise and join with the word, world's eternal song of praise. Holy, incredible, unimaginable God, full of power and strength, all of heaven and earth are full of the signs of your glory. You amaze us, and your son Jesus, whom you sent, is equally amazing. We are continually amazed by you. God, you are amazing, and so is your son, Jesus Christ. Through your holy plan, Christ's birth, death, and resurrection, your church was born. You saved us from the power of sin and eternal death and made a new agreement with us through baptism in the Holy Spirit. Christ sent us to tell the world about his love, and now we, his family, are joining together at his holy table. As is a way to remember Christ's perfect love and life, we happily and thankfully give back our lives as holy living sacrifices. Receive this gift of our lives together with Christ's gift for us as we speak the truth about our faith. Christ died. Christ lives. Christ is coming again. God, we ask you to pour your Holy Spirit on each person in this room and those who are watching uh, via uh, Zoom. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be the body and blood of Christ so that by taking them into our bodies, you will make us the body of Christ for the rest of the world. And everyone will know that sin is redeemed by Christ's life, death, and resurrection. Renew us. And help us to remember we are Christ's church. Strengthen our faith and service in every nation and with all people. So we can faithfully show and tell the world how much your love can do. Use your Holy Spirit to make us one. At one with Christ and at one with each other. So we can care for the world until Christ comes again. We all join around this table as family in perfect love. We proclaim to the world that you possess every good quality and you deserve all our honor and obedience now and forever. And God's people said, amen. On the night which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He broke the bread. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This time I'd invite you to take the bread from the piece and you may remove your mask in order to take the communion. Awesome. 
And this is the blood of Christ shared for you. body and blood of Christ that was given for you. May you be filled with his grace that you may offer that same grace to one another and to our world. Let us pray. We thank you, dear Lord, for the time to share together, to celebrate your love, your presence with us. Here we are, Lord, Call us and equip us. Amen. I invite you to stand for our closing hymn. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I save? Okay, again, guess what? Next Sunday, we can sing. Mary, you got stuff planned? All right. All right. Next Sunday, we will be able to sing.
going to be so excited. You don't want to hear me sing. I'll still kind of mouth the words, but you all can sing. How's that? Would you now receive the benediction? Father, send us from this place filled with your spirit that we may indeed fulfill the mission that you have called us all to, to be fishers. Lord, you are the great fisherman. Help us to learn what it means to reach our community in the name of Christ. And now go in the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh